Hello, and welcome to our virtual studio visit. I'm Erin Becker. I'm the Norma Jean Calderwood Director of the Cambridge Art Association. Um, and today we're visiting with Judith Prager at her studio in New Hampshire. Um, so I'm gonna throw things over to Judith. Hi, here I am in my little cottage in the woods in New Hampshire, sheltering in place. And I just thought I'd give you a view of my front porch, show you how woodsy it is. And welcome to my little house. We're now we'll go inside. Sorry, it's shaking around. And here we are, oops, in my painting studio. Here's my big easel. And I'm gonna be uh, showing you some of my work that I'm doing right now. But first I'm gonna give you a little tour of this studio. Oh, and uh, here's the, uh, here is my beautiful view. Only it's raining today. I was going to take you outside, but it is too wet. So as uh, some of you know, this view has been my inspiration in many of my paintings. And I'm going to, I'll show you some. This is my, um, sort of my secondary studio. My main studio is in Somerville. And a lot of you have come to my open studios in Somerville. But uh, so this one is a little bit smaller. And here is a table where I do a lot of my work. I just started to do, to prime a canvas last night. And it turned into a painting. <laughs> Can you see it? Is this okay? And here's some of my tools. Some classic uh, painters tools that I use. I use stuff like this. Rollers for my big abstracts. I've been painting all the time. I have really uh, three modes abstracts, um, landscapes, and um, still life. So let's see, I think I'll settle down a little bit and talk about some of the paintings that I'm working on right now. You are muted. You can hear me okay, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, this is a big paint, big landscape over here. And this painting is based on, uh, can any, I don't know if anyone can, any of you can tell, this is actually Memorial Drive at Harvard Square, which is the place that I've painted more times than any other place. And I, I think I started off because I just love the lines of the river the sweep, and the, I love these beautiful big sycamore trees. And uh, really, I've done maybe 40 paintings there. This is the biggest one. And when I started to do it, it was um, uh, it was very dull. And so I just started to paint. I said to myself, just do anything you want on it to make it fun. And so I started to put these funny lines in it. and make some abstractions. I just painted right over the painting. And one of my big things in painting is 
to feel free to let the painting talk to me and to keep making changes. I feel a great sense of freedom when I paint over something. So by the way, if you guys have any uh, questions or anything you want me to talk about, just write it into the chat box, okay? And I'm gonna, because I'll be answering questions as I go along. Um, anyway, I love the surprise of painting. And this was very surprising to me. <laughs> I don't think it's quite finished. I'm thinking I might uh, take out something over here. Okay, here's another surprise. Why, well, there's a painting right underneath it. <laughs> this is a, a landscape that is based on the landscape up here in Pratt Pond. And, um, it also has surprised me a lot. Let's see. Let's see. And when I first came up here be, um, in this very hard and crazy time, I, I ha kept walking around the pond and I, I was really attracted to the bleakness of the landscape and the big rocks. So I thought that's what was going to be in this painting. And uh, as I started to paint it, it really changed. And you can see it, maybe it's a much more of a lyrical landscape, I would say. I like the flow of the lines. Uh, I like this size, 30 by 40 is one of my favorite big sizes. But it's changing a lot. And I honestly have no idea how it's going to come out. <laughs> Anybody have questions about this one? Ah, so it looks like um, there are some comments and then some questions. I'm I going see. to unmute Lorinda so she can. Lorinda, good, good question, Lorinda. I just have to find her. Go am ahead, I, Lorinda. Am I unmuted? Yes. No, you. I can hear you. Hey, Why don't you uh, say your question? Yeah, I was just wondering since you you sometimes do the same. Uh, location in your in your paintings like Pratt Pond or that stand of sycamores by the Charles River over the years have you noticed a, not a, not really a progression but a change in the direction that your paintings have taken over the years I great question Thank uh, you. <laughs> I, I think just what you might expect like I think in the beginning my paintings were uh, much more traditional. And uh, in fact, the funny thing is the that very first painting that I painted of the Charles River was the painting that got me into being a member of the Cambridge Art Association. I submitted it to a show and I got accepted. And that was like probably at least 30 years ago. Huh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I think they've become more and more abstracted. I wish I had all my Charles River paintings to show you because I have done ones that have um, very uh, imaginary colors. And um, even the, this one, I mean, it's definitely an abstracted painting. And I feel, I guess, because I've done it so many times, I don't know, I just feel free to uh, simplify. Like, I, I, I real, as I did it more times, I realized what it was about it that I liked so much, which, as I said, it was kind of like the spinning out of these, of the lines. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. Did that answer that one? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Welcome. Um, and then it looks like, Judith, we have one more question. Um, from Robin Levendov. So I'm gonna unmute you. Hey Robin. Robin. Hi. Hi Judith. Hi. I you know I noticed that the the painting behind this one is really different from your usual style of painting landscapes. It's much more muted. Um, was that um, it's very different from your usual style. Was what prompted that and was it conscious or you just followed the painting? Well, the fa funny thing about it was, um, I thought it was going to be very bold, and I felt it was going to represent my feelings of this time. And so in my mind, it was going to have big, dark lines and uh, browns and 
white and tan and high contrast. And all I can tell you is I started it and this is what happened. This happens to me so often. I, I, I saw the blue and I said, ooh, that, I like that blue. That looks really good. And uh, I think it's also, this is an acrylic painting. I, I mean, a lot of times I paint in oil. I paint in both mediums. And, um, you know, it's a big painting. And so the paint, th this was sort of, in my mind, it was kind of like an underpainting. And so it, um, maybe the paint isn't as vivid. I don't know. It's it well, I, think, I think the value range is narrower, right? Yeah. And yeah. the lines are more indistinct between yeah. colors. Right, and it's just, it's more subtle. Not that, not that the other style doesn't work because I love your work, but anyway, it's just very different and very moody. Well, I had more contrast and it just didn't seem to be working in this painting, so I took it out. And um, I don't know what's gonna happen to it. It'd be really interesting to know. Maybe the secret to painting a foggy day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ooh. I like the colors as they are. And um, actually, I'm going to show you the one underneath it, which is a high contrast. So, high. Um, Judith, I'm going to have, I'm going to unmute um, Susan Murray. You're getting a lot of really nice comments, too. Oh, great. Um, I'm not going to read the comments because you can read them, but any questions I will unmute people for. So it looks like Susan Murray has a question. I'm going to unmute her and then we can continue with your. I don't see that one. Yeah. Okay. Hi there. Can you hear Hi. me? Hi. Uh, oh, my question uh, was this, I, I, don't, I'm, I don't know anything about painting, so this could be totally naive. Um, how do you choose your colors or your palette for these, for these paintings uh, on Memorial Drive in particular? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's interesting since I um, have been doing this talk, I've really been thinking so much more about my process and what, ha what I realize what happens to me is I get a vision in my head of colors. And um, that's how I start. I just, it, it sort of comes to me in a, in a very simplified way. And um, I, I think that's how I start off. And then I keep putting more and more colors down. And then the painting itself starts to talk to me. Mm -hmm. And I just see what feels good. Do you, do you feel like you're drawn to a certain palette? Um, or I can see this painting that you have up is completely different. Yeah, well, <laughs> let me say this painting uh, came out of an assignment that I gave my painting class. And it, it is a takeoff on a painting by Andre Duran. And I'm gonna, actually I have the painting here. I'm gonna show it to you. Oh yeah. So this is, uh, it's very unusual for me to do a takeoff on another painter, but I gave it as an assignment. Uh, I called it painting from the masters and um, it was really fun for me. And I said to myself, what color did Andre Duran put down first? <laughs> See? Yeah. And I decided it was that yellow. Uh, so I covered the uh, canvas in the yellow and then went from there. And as you can see, it's, it's uh, nowhere like the, the painting. And I probably will um, not make it like the original painting. You know, I'll probably do somewhat more and then um, keep going. Yeah, no, it's more, it's more interesting if it's a riff on your, it's your, your own riff on, on that painting. Yeah, yes. I think so. Yeah. And it's also my nature. <laughs> like I never can copy any. <laughs> if I try to copy something, I just don't. <laughs> so, so it, in a way, it's great for me because it makes me start with a different palette, and I just love uh, experimenting with things like that. I, I love finding different ways to start. Oh, oh, I'm getting a signal. <laughs> I'm just getting a signal. Before I proceed, I'm going to show you uh, some of my other paintings that I have here because it's already a quarter to one. And then maybe we'll, uh, we can get back with more questions. 
so um, as I said, I do uh, a lot of other genres here. And, and one of them, uh, I was in Florida just before this whole virus thing broke out. Luckily, I had this really nice trip. So here are some of my beach paintings. Ooh. Wait, can you see them? And uh, I was on Anna Maria Island for a month. And a lot of these I did right from my balcony. And then this is from a beautiful villa that we sit, stayed in in Sarasota. And these are all done on wood panels. These are eight by tens. And I really scratched into the surface. I love painting on the panels because you can scratch. Is that, can you see that? Okay, and then I do a lot of still life. This is one of my favorites from my, this is from my recent 12 by 12 series. And these are very thick paint, thick oil paint. This is one of my all time favorites. I love painting the reflections in the glass. This is my only painting that I painted on copper. My friend gave me a piece of copper, real experiment for me. And you can even see the copper showing through. I don't know if you can see that. Then here's a few landscapes. Oop. This is based on the, the view right outside. This is a, lo a typical local landscape, it's a marsh. This is one of my all time favorite uh, still lifes, the figs, which I usually hide from people who are coming to my open studios <laughs> because I wanna keep it. And here, this is, uh, Have I got this? This is a recent abstract. Is this a good view? I can't even uh, see. Maybe they can move back a little bit, Judith. Like that? There, that's perfect. So uh, this is a painting that was part of an assignment I gave my class. And it's based on a, a detail of a photo by Lorinda Bedingfield actually and it um it's very unusual for me and i think it's because of the times that we're in that it has that strange vertiginous quality and i got a lot of comments on facebook leave it the way it is <laughs> people are very happy to give their opinions <laughs> so um let's see here's some more i have my umbrellas. <laughs> I do a lot of outdoor painting, plein air painting also. Okay, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna answer some more questions. What? Oh, the material, yeah, I showed it, no? <laughs> I think I did. Unless you wanna see more studio views, I think I'll answer some of these questions. Erin, uh, is there anything I should? Nope. So um, looking at them kind of in order, um, you've had a couple of people ask questions about painting on copper. So instead of unmuting um, the individuals who ask those questions, I think if you want to talk a little bit about the process of working on copper. Well, the copper that the person gave to me was already sanded and primed. So I was very lucky. I didn't have to do anything, but I think normally you, you have to sand and prime it. And um, I really liked it because the paint, the paint slid around like crazy. And um, I felt that that really helped me in that painting. And then afterward, I, uh, I put a coating of, um, I think I used uh, a gloss medium on it because I felt that some of the raw copper was shining through and I didn't want it to tarnish. 
So, cause I love the real copper color. How's that? I, I just use regular oil paint. And actually I've been using a lot of water soluble oil paint. So I think, I think that's was painted in that. Cool. Um, Trudy has had, well, had a question and then has another question. So I'm going to unmute Trudy. Hi, Go June. Ahead. Hi, where are, I can't see your face. Um, I want to <laughs> see you. Maybe there's a scrolling, I'm not sure. But anyway, this is great. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Question, um, and my, I wrote the question also, but I just wondered if you could take a, a, a minute to talk more about the dialogue you have with the painting, like, you know, how consciously engaged you are and like what the, what the painting is feeling like it needs and how much you're just kind of unconsciously in your head or something else about that, that process. Great question. Um, well, I think it's both. I really like it if I feel like I'm not thinking at all <laughs> and I just go at it, but I, I am a person who I am constantly stepping back from the painting. Every single stroke that I take, I move back as far as I can go and I look at it and I'm just thinking, what does it need? Um, you know, what is it calling for? What pops into my head? Then I turn the painting upside down and I paint, I usually paint on all my paintings upside down. I turn it sideways. I squint at it so I can get the um, dark and light patterns. And um, because I think every painting is really abstract in the end. So even if it's a still life, you have to see the abstract patterns and I just try to be open to whatever pops into my head. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I realize, you know, it'll say it needs more darks. That will be a classic thing or, um, you know, one part of the painting doesn't look right to me. I really love covering <laughs> the part that doesn't look right. I, I often just paint it out with another color. I, if it doesn't look right, sometimes I'll just scrape the whole thing down. Um, which many times makes it look surprisingly good. And also I look at the different quadrants of the painting. I'll, I hold my hand up like this and I'll look at the upper left corner and I'll think, well, how does that look? How does this corner look? You know? Great. Um, okay, let's see. We have a question from Jessica Burko. I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you, Jessica. Hi, can you hear me? Hi, yeah, I Thanks, hear you, Sarah. but I can't see you. Oh, if you scroll sorry. across the top, Judith, you can see everybody's um, little uh, Yeah, I have to move it. I only can see six at a time or something. Judith, oh, hi, thank Liz. you so much for doing this. Um, oh, my so pleasure. We, we were looking at your website before this, and we saw we were looking specifically at all of those beach paintings. Uh -huh. So it was really wonderful to see the larger works on your easel that are so different than that. And my question is, um, in working in such varied sizes and in such varied techniques, how does one way of working influence the other? Ah, hmm. Right? <laughs> well, that is a good question. Um, I just think it's very different. Like to go from that, that small beach painting to a painting of this, size it feels very different when you work on it i don't know how much the um i don't know how much they influence each other i mean a big painting like this i love to move my body when i paint when you paint this size you you know you're really moving your arm and your whole body when you when you um go to those really small paintings it's just a very a different thing i I don't, I'm not sure how to answer that one, <laughs> how much they influence each other. I, I think that they all look like my paintings. So that's interesting. You could see my hand in each of the, in all of them, right? Very much, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I think in the small, you know, I think you're free to try out different things with the different sizes. Um, you know, like on a small painting, you're not you. You don't have to use so much paint. You are. Um, you can easily wipe it out and start over again. Um, and so you could really. It, it's a little easier to make 
to do certain kinds of experiments. And then maybe when you go to the big painting, you've already done that in the small painting. So, um, you know, you could carry that over, I would say. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Jessica. All right, it looks like um, Lorraine Sullivan has raised her hand. So I'll let Lorraine ask her question. Hello, I'm not Lorraine, but I do know her. <laughs> I can tell that's not Lorraine, Phil. Uh, we don't look at all alike, no. This has been really, really good, Judith. Have you messed around with Yupo like everybody seems to be doing these days? No. <laughs> have you, I, I'd love to try Yupo. I have one piece of uh, Yupo paper that Lorinda gave me. Um, and I think I'm really going to like it because I really like, again, when the paint slides a lot. You know, I noticed that in... Um, when my painting is a little bit out of control, it's, I get my best paintings, I would say. Yes. So, I took a, a, a workshop with it, but you need flat space, and my flat space is all cluttered, and I just haven't gotten to back to it. But it, the erasable quality is really nice. The other yeah. question, how, and you may have already answered it, but when do you feel you're done with painting? Oh, the classic. <laughs> yeah. When, Everybody what, when do you feel you're done with a painting? Oh, no, I'm asking you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everybody always, that is the most common question that oh. I get asked. Um, I think, um, you know, what I like is to come upon my painting by surprise and I go, wow. <laughs> Good. It has a pop. And then I pretty much know it's done. Thanks. Judith, no, can I ask a question now? This is sure. Lorraine, not Phil, okay? Hi, All Lorraine. Right. Yeah, hi. <laughs> uh, I'm wondering how you managed to maintain um, two studios. Wouldn't, it's like, uh, do you have to have double the supplies? And well, I, ha I was going to show you, I have all these uh, boxes of paint. See this? Yeah. yeah. So I, I am actually carrying my paint boxes. I have in here right now maybe six different boxes like that. Not only that, but some are acrylics and some are oils. Ooh, <laughs> and, wow. and then there's the mediums. So um, I schlep them back and forth and it drives me nuts. I try to have certain paints that I keep in certain <laughs> studios, but that's a hard part of it. I, I can't really complain, can I? But. <laughs> Right, I know, I know. <laughs> it's hard, and a lot of times I, I forget something, and then I don't have the right thing in the right place. There are certain things I have uh, doubles of, you know, like the regular acrylic medium or uh, water bottles and things like that. Now, is your other studio in your home? It is. It's in my attic, and I would love to show that one also. It's the whole third floor in Somerville, and um, it's a really interesting space. Nice. Nice job. Very nice. Thank beautiful. you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, all right, Judith, looks like we have one more question from Sarah Putnam before we... Ah, uh, Sarah. Hi. Hi, Hi Judith. Sarah. I Hi. love this. Hi. Thank Great you. Great to see you. I um, love having you here. Yes, me too. Um, I was just curious, very technically, if you wanted to say how you, you talked about scratching or um, into the wood. Yeah. Is it, what do you use for that? Is it that, that toothed instrument you showed earlier? I just use something all else? Just, I, I use all different things for the small paintings. First of all, what I do, one of the things I didn't mention is it's very important what color I put down as a primer is very important to me. It affects the painting greatly. And if I put down black and then I put, say, green on top of it, I, I would take even the end of the paintbrush on the small ones and just um, mm. scrape away the green and I will get the black showing. Which in, like on, on those beach paintings, there's a lot of beach grass. And uh, it's so much fun, and you just go like, <laughs> you know. It sounds really, fun. Cool. It, it's really fun. Sometimes you can scratch even deeper. Like on the wood thing, if you scratch deeper, <coughs> excuse me, you're going to hit the wood. Right, right. But I experiment cool. with different things a lot of times. I have like a thousand palette knives. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed wow. when I was going around. I have so many palette knives of all different 
shapes, one of my favorite things. Um, I, a lot of times I'll use the point of the palette knife. You can use a regular pencil or a ballpoint pen. Mm. <laughs> and then you can use these other tools. Uh, you know, you can use a tool like this. Yeah, that's cool. And then you get the, um, or you could use even a regular comb. This is just a flat one. Huh. And you can use it, the side of it to make a line like this, or you can use part, you know, some of the flat parts. And um, it's really fun thinking of other things that you can use. I mean, you can use a fork, <laughs> you know, you can use your finger. Cool, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Great. Great question. I could go on and on. Um, all right, so Judith, um, this has been really amazing. Um, we've had so many positive comments from people um, about being able to visit your studio. Um, so before we say goodbye to everybody today, I first want um, you to let people know um, where they can see your work and if they maybe saw something today that they wanted to purchase, how they would do that. Oh, great. And actually, um, well, my website is probably the best place. It's uh, prageart.com. That's P-R-A-G-E-R-A-R-T. Dot com. Actually, I'm having a special sale in honor of this occasion for the next week. 10% um, off and free shipping, which is on my already low prices. <laughs> and part of the proceeds will go to the Cambridge Art Association. Oh, that's very kind of you. Thank you. And um, also, I'm on Facebook. I, I show all of my paintings on Facebook at Judith Prager and also Judith Prager painter and i'm also on instagram at prager art so i and i keep showing lots of new paintings and also i have a lot of photos of pratt pond wow. and uh, any just send me an email or whatever any questions fantastic um so this was recorded um we will be sharing oh, the recording on our website later this week um, we also have our next studio visit on Tuesday, the 14th at 12.30 with Hala Fotowat. Um, so I encourage you to sign up for that as well. Hala is a painter based in Cambridge. And if you enjoyed what you saw here today, consider making a donation to the Cambridge Art Association and supporting um, programs like this. Um, I'm going to turn off our spotlight view for a moment and put us all in the little Brady Bunch grid so we can all wave um, and say, uh, actually, I'll unmute you all. You can all say thank you to Judith. Thanks, Judith. Thank you. 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 Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Judith. Thank you. The nice comments. Thank you so much. Thank you there, Judith. I fun. love seeing everyone. This is great. <laughs> yeah, love seeing you. <laughs> Hi, Lorinda. Hi, Judith. <laughs> Which time you're there? Hi, Sarah. <laughs> Hi, Judith. Bye-bye. Yeah. Have a good day, Bye. everybody. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Bye, Judith. Bye, 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 Bye. Bye everybody. Bye. 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 Wonderful. Oh, she's shutting it off. Uh-oh. Okay.